Hi everybody, and welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. A little bit of context about the story. The original post is where we get the backstory of everything that's going to happen in the update. Now let's get started. This post is from the subreddit Engagement Ring, and it's by user Deleted. Does anyone else here, besides me, feel they can't partake in the ring posting on this sub because your engagement ring isn't big, sparkly, or unique enough? I am feeling a little down after my boyfriend's recent proposal. I said yes, but I am a bit disappointed in the ring. Even though I know it sounds very materialistic to say. Even when we first started talking about marriage, we've been dating for 3 years, I told him that I absolutely 100% wanted to be involved in picking out or designing the engagement ring. And since we both have good jobs, I would even put some of my own money down to get a ring I absolutely love. What I ended up receiving was a 0.20 carat round solitaire diamond. A few things I told him about the ring as well. That round diamond solitaires on a plain band weren't my idea of an engagement ring. And it feels like he went out of the way to get me everything I didn't want. I also did tell him that because I did want a bit of a bigger stone, I would pay for some myself. And he really ignored that request also. I know this part sounds bad as well, but he also hyped up the proposal a lot and in the end it felt anticlimactic. The whole year he said he was going to wait to propose around Christmas time when all the lights are up around town and everything feels magical. There is a cute little Victorian era themed town just a half hour away from where we live and that is the most special place in the world to me. This town always goes all out on Christmas for decorations and theming. It really is the most charming and magical place I have ever seen and we go for walks there all the time on weekends. Now I feel I'll just be sad when we do go there and I feel he sort of went out of his way to ruin that for me as well. That was literally my dream engagement. He said he was going to make me feel like a princess at Christmas time. He knows how much I love the royal Christmas movies and instead just proposed in the bedroom before we got up for work. I know some will say that maybe he couldn't wait and that maybe nerves got to him, but he knows I would have said yes anyways, no matter how nervous he was. And quite honestly, I feel the whole nerves thing is a bit of an excuse. How come men get nervous is always applied to them, but it feels that women are never allowed to be nervous about anything. I know it sounds mean, but that really is how I feel. Why does it seem he did everything wrong on purpose, even when we had open and honest conversations about my dream ring, proposal, etc. And he went out of his way to get all those things wrong. Should I be honest and give the ring back? I feel as though I spelled everything out numerous times and even though he said he'd remember to make everything special, he very well could have been too interested in what was on TV to really listen to me every single time we talked about it. Alright, so the first thing I'm gonna say is to please remember that this is not a post from relationships or relationship advice. It's a post from the subreddit engagement ring, which of course goes as to the subject of why OP is posting. Now, I'm not going to comment on the engagement ring because I declare myself ignorant on the subject. All I know is that my wife loved the one I gave her and that's it. So regarding OP's impression that the fiancé did exactly the opposite of everything he had told OP before on how his proposal would be, then maybe it's a very crappy way to get out of the relationship without being the one that breaks up? I mean, I find it hard to see another explanation. So OP, let's review money, logistics and intent. On the money side, you were willing to pay for part of your engagement ring and I think going Dutch on the engagement ring is not a bad idea as long as both agree on the final price. Anyways, it wasn't a money problem. Logistics. You said the little town is 30 minutes away and you just need to wait to Christmas time to be able to do it. So no problem here. And finally, intent. He has spoken about your engagement before. He has made statements regarding what he's going to do. So I guess he's not pressured to propose, but still, he could be doing what everyone expects him to do, quote unquote. So yeah, to me it seems like a break up with me move. And what do you guys think about this whole thing? Let me know what you would tell OP in the comments section. And now let's move on to the community comments to see what they said. Terra Soras Rex says, I would be honest and give the ring back. This is a huge warning that he is disregarding all of your wants even when you've clearly communicated and agreed. It's not about the dollar value or the size of the ring. It's really about how he knew where your heart was and chose an entirely different path instead. 
Imagine this same scenario applied to buying a house, planning your wedding or honeymoon, having children, etc. It feels like a bait and switch so he tells you what you want to hear and does whatever he wants. If you accept it, you are accepting a lifetime of this. And OP responds, and that last sentence is exactly what I'm afraid of happening for the rest of my life. He was always good at being a partner in general, but everything seemed to go downhill after a major life event such as an engagement. If he really is doing this because he doesn't want to marry me, just something I've been thinking about, I really wish he'd be honest with me instead of acting like a child and getting everything wrong on purpose. At this point, I feel like I could honestly give myself a better proposal and ring if he and other men just flat out refused to do it. Sorry, just a little pissed off right now. Leaker929 says, I don't have great advice, but I am in the exact same boat. Even his mother looked at it and said, that's it? Why'd you wait so long if you weren't saving? And to make it worse, the ring gives me a rash. The proposal was on the couch in our sweatpants, and he said it just felt like us, and stuck on a couch is not how I see my future or the definition of us. I love him, but I'm embarrassed of the ring and proposal both. And OP responds, my possibly future mother-in-law always sides with my boyfriend because of course he can do no wrong. And I really feel like I have to watch my tongue around her, otherwise I'm the one who ends up in trouble at the end of the night when she goes home and I get the silent treatment. I'm so glad his mother isn't afraid to side with you though and sadly I wish that were the case for me. If I even expressed any dislike about the ring in her presence, she'd tell my partner not to marry me right in front of me, and she has done so in the past about other issues and likes to talk about me like I'm not in the room. She'll say something like, If she's that disappointed, perhaps you should reconsider living with her and come back home with me. Now, I'm just like, good, maybe you two deserve each other. Lindsay111 says, I think you need to question why he ignored it all. If it was intentional, then do you really want to enter into a lifelong commitment with this guy? I'd be asking myself what other major life events he won't respect you on. If, however, he was just overwhelmed with the proposal and freaked out and forgot what you talked about, then he should be more than willing to return the ring and pick out what you want. And OP responds, I did want to wait at least a week myself to see if I was just being spoiled or materialistic, but I really am worried if he did do all of this on purpose. I wanted to give myself some time to think things over as well, but now that the engagement shock has died down, I think it will be an appropriate time to bring all this up with him. And even with the proposal, it doesn't cost money at all. He even told me he wanted to propose to me in our favorite spot, the town I was talking about. And all we have to do is drive there and not pay for anything. So it's not like it's that much work. As for the ring, I wasn't expecting myself to need to hold his hand through the process, but I'd rather do that and help him get things right instead of basically going behind my back and buying what I didn't want. I'm worried about how far back in advance he bought the ring with return policies and all, but I feel that's his fault as well for not listening to anything at this point. Additional information from OP's comments. My boyfriend doesn't respond to how his mother treats me. He says he's afraid of making her upset, and then if she's upset with everyone, the entire night will be ruined. I'm honestly just sick of seeing her face by this point, hello? And I am so close to the point of telling him she's permanently disinvited from our home, but that I'm perfectly content if he chooses to go and see her on his own. Because if she says one word about this engagement fiasco in front of my face as though I'm not in the room again, I feel as though I'm going to scream and pull her hair out. Honestly, I would have been thrilled with just about any heartfelt proposal as long as there was some thought and consideration in it. He was the one who brought up Christmas being my favorite time of year and wanting to propose to me under the lights in the Victorian town and going skating to celebrate. And all of that stuff is completely, totally free, yet absolutely magical. His reasoning was that Halloween feels exactly the same as Christmas because there are still decorations and lights but it doesn't have the same romantic feel to me. I wanted to cozy up to him with hot chocolate and all that Christmas stuff, and it's still 75 degrees out here. Anyway, when he gets home from work in a few hours, I'm going to let him settle in for dinner, and then I will bring up the whole rank proposal and lack of effort issues as gently as I possibly can. If he takes it well, then that's great. If he doesn't, then it seems I really do have a lot of things to consider with our relationship. 
Alright, well, the community shared their point of view with OP, and OP has a plan going forward. Now, let's move on with the update, where I have to say, it gets a bit wild, so just be ready. Anyways, before we get to that, let me tell you about the playlists. Here's another one, all videos in it have updates. Now, let's move on. Hello everyone, I am so sorry I didn't realize how many people wanted an update on this situation. I have been distraught for the past few days and I just didn't have it in me to use the internet at all during this time. I am feeling 10 times better now. Yes, we are going through a breakup over his stubbornness regarding this whole engagement issue and, as predicted, an entire crap show went down between his mother and me to the point where I had to call the police and beg them to take her off my property. I said she was trespassing, which was basically true. The only hard thing is we are stuck co-owning a house together and need to put it on the market and try to sell it as soon as possible. I am even willing to accept a low offer just to get this effed up family out of my life for good. Thank god I only dealt with this douche for 3 years and the next time I smell bullcrap coming from any partner or potential partner I'll be sure to tell him where to go because I cannot deal with this crap parade a second time around. And people, whether you are a woman or a man, please remember this, when you marry someone you certainly do marry into their family. So whether you get along with them or not, just remembering you are marrying their son or daughter and will therefore be your legal in-laws for however long you decide to stay married. So here's how everything went down. When my boyfriend came home from work, I sat him down gently after we had both finished our dinner and explained to him that while I couldn't wait to be his wife, there were some things I would like to go over with him in regards to the ring and the proposal. He immediately jumped to the conclusion that I was a selfish gold digger and how right his mother was about me. I know it doesn't seem very mature of me, but I pretty much laughed in his face like, bro, you're calling me a gold digger? Meanwhile, we make exactly the same amount of money and I come from a wealthy family, so therefore I have more money than you and ought to be calling you the gold digger here. But I tell him he's being ridiculous for not allowing me to spend my own money on my engagement ring and how I wouldn't feel hurt in the least if he wanted to do the same for his own. But then he starts shooting off some bullcrap about how women aren't allowed to decide what their engagement ring looks like or when and if a man decides when he wants to marry them or how he's going to propose. At this point I am screaming because I tell him it's effing free. I guess, besides gas money, which I pretty much pay for anyway, to drive me to the town I've dreamed of getting proposed to for ages, and it's free to look at Christmas lights and go ice skating. He tells me that my expectations are too high. I tell him to get the F out of my face for being that damn lazy and selfish. Do you know what this man and baby does next? Well, the mother needs to enter this situation somehow, so he cries and calls her on his phone asking her to come pick him up. I tell him that he's more than welcome to go live with his mother until he's well into his 50s for all I care, but that beast is not stepping foot in my house. He shouts at me that this is his house too and his mother is more than welcome to help pack his stuff. I figured if this is going to be the last time I see either of them, I'm better off just staying out of the way until they were gone for good. Well, of course, mommy has to barge into my house and tell me how ungrateful and selfish I was towards her precious boy. I warn her gently that if she comes anywhere near me, I'll rip her hair out and push her down to the floor. I've never felt that angry in all my life and didn't know I had it in me to stick up for myself like that. But then she starts screaming at me that I wouldn't dare and how she'd sue me. And I told her I'd claim self-defense and tell the judge that not only was she trespassing, but willingly threatening me in my personal space and or harassing me. She initiated the physical contact first by actually hitting my arm and I reacted by spitting in her eye. I know how awful that sounds but at that moment when I felt my entire life was falling apart I was saying and doing all kinds of crazy stuff I didn't know I was capable of. You know how I mentioned how strong and high and mighty she likes to act in my previous post? Well, she literally starts to shake and starts developing these pathetic crocodile tears and screams for her son to come to get her. Effing baby acting like a tough bitch all these years resorts to that the moment someone dares to stick up for themselves in her presence. There's shouting and screaming on everyone's side and I just call the damn police. My ex immediately tells them that this is his house too and the officer just looks at him and his mother in disbelief, shakes her head and asks, 
This situation is already out of hand. I am going to have to ask you and your mother to leave for at least a day or two until everyone calms down. I am so thankful she said that I burst into tears myself. She gave me some very good advice that I wouldn't have thought of in the heat of the moment and she asked me if I could have some kind of family member stay with me for the next couple of days because she was concerned they would come back and threaten me again. Even better, I went to my own parents' house and our house is empty right now as far as I know, but it is getting put on the market as soon as possible. Oh yeah, and for those of you wondering, I gave myself a take this piece of crap ring with you moment before my ex and his mother left for good and I threw the ring past both their heads when they were heading to their car. The last thing I hear my ex screaming is, F no, because God forbid he loses his effing $700 piece of garbage diamond ring that immediately depreciates to $200 the moment it slipped off my finger. He actually thought he could get all his money back for that ring. I am so sorry if this entire post sounded incredibly immature, but that's pretty much all I can give you guys when it comes to my douche of an ex and his mother. Please note that I have absolutely no more negative or positive emotions in regard to this situation and I am no longer thinking irrationally or planning on doing something irrational to myself or others. I don't give an F what my ex does as long as he doesn't come anywhere near myself or my family. Everything and everyone is perfectly safe and fine and I really do feel 20 times lighter and happier than I did 2-3 to three days ago. I really didn't want it to end up this way but on the bright side I don't have to deal with them again. Part of the reason why she liked to get in my face so much all the time and try to get me riled up was that she had a huge problem with me taking karate training throughout my lifetime ever since I was 10 and now I'm 30. Still in it. She says a proper woman doesn't need karate. I literally had no plans whatsoever to spit in her eye, but that was the very first time she laid a hand on me and I just kind of lost it for a bit. I'm glad it didn't need to escalate any further than that. The time I warned her that I would throw her down was because she kept invading my personal space when all I wanted her to do was to get her son's crap and go. And that's when she had to hit me to see what I would do next. Alright, well I'm gonna call this one a turbulent update with a positive result. You don't have to deal with any of them again OP. Good for you. Thank you so much for sharing and all the best in the future. Take care. Now let's finish this video with a mood booster post. This post is from the subreddit Malicious Compliance and it's by user nilanute4283. They must be my leaves on my curb as you wish. The leaf collection company for my neighborhood has absurdly strict rules about where leaves must be for pickup. I live at the end of a cul-de-sac, so my curb is curved and pretty short, about 30 feet or 9 meters long. My property is wedge-shaped, so my backyard is quite long, 200 feet or 60 meters, and it has 40 to 50 oak trees. I also have two sugar maples in my front yard, so leaves, lots of leaves. Pickup rules state leaves must be within 5 feet of the curb but on the road. They must also be at least 15 feet from a mailbox, because subscriptions for leaf pickup are by individual homeowners, neighbors are not allowed to combine leaves and cannot buy a group subscription. Subscribers must only put their leaves from the current year out for pickup. Pickup trucks use GPS to identify homes that have signed up and ignore leaves in front of homes that did not sign up. Because I have so many leaves and so little curve, only 15 feet of available curve due to the required distance from a mailbox, I called the leaf collection company and asked to put the leaves along a longer curve I share with my neighbor. No problem, they said. Great. The truck came through and picked up a fraction of the pile and left the rest of the pile the driver decided was in front of my neighbor's property. I called the company back and a different person said those are the rules, I'll just have to figure it out. Fine, now it's on. I have 15 feet of width and 5 feet of depth. There is, however, no limit on height. I moved the remaining leaves to my available curve space. I collected the rest of my leaves and added them to the pile. I spoke with my neighbors and acquired the rights to their leaves by paying them $1 each. Now they are all my leaves. I shoveled and swept the leaves off the streets. They went on the pile. I collected the purchase leaves from the neighbors. They went on the pile. Leaves continued to fall, so I kept adding them. It was a lot of work, but the pile was over 12 feet tall. I spent a ton of time using a snow shovel to fling the leaves to the top of the pile that was more than 5 feet above my head. Neighborhood residents stopped to gape at the epic leaf mound. 
I am happy to battle willful ignorance with malicious compliance. I reminded myself of this every time I spent another hour tending to the obscenity on my curb. The truck came today. The pile dwarfed the truck. They had to drive away and dump leaves, then come back and reload. Twice. Here's a picture of the pile. Wow, OP, that is epic and committed. You really put in the work for this malicious compliance. Thank you so much for sharing, OP. And that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch it. Now, if you've gotten to this point in the video, I assume that you like these stories that I'm reading out. So here are a couple more that you might enjoy. And if you don't have any time to watch another story right now, save it for later. And also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.